Let me be what you want me be. In temptation, tribulation, in worldly loss and trials, let me love you to end. Though tempted, tried, and frustrated, though my heart ought with storm of life, though sorrow wrecks my comfort so. Let me love you to end. Give me your heart of holiness that I may flee from worldly stain and my garment be white as yours. Let me love you to end. Draw me close to thy cross alone, dead to this world, and pleasure sins, living for the dying to serve. Let me love you, dear. <sighs> Where did I miss it? Where did the glory fall? Where did I get it all wrong? <sighs> I must finish writing this letter today. For it has to be read by all Lysandra. The story of how the glory lost. And how the recovery began. <sighs> Thank God. There is hope for a tree cut down, but not cut off. At least when it smells or have a taste of water to spring up again. <sighs> that was my case. That was the case of my marriage too. Thank God for Second Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. The water of life by which God liberated me and recovered me back to himself. my Christian home, oh Lord. I'm ready to come back home. When those sons of prophets told Elijah, we need expansion. We need improvement. We want our assignment to grow more. I realized they were saying this because they have the axe in their hands. If they had no axe, there would be no thought nor pursuit of advancement. There will be no desire for greater work, for greater ministry for the Lord. And the Lord made me realize that battle hacks in their hand is my marriage. It's our marriage. When they lost that hacks, when they lost that marriage, they lost the assignment. When they lost that hacks, they lost the advancement. Every vision died. Every, every assignment sunk immediately that hacks sank. <laughs> Lord, I never began like this. I started well with the Lord. I was properly taught and discipled. I never entered into marriage hastily. I knew it and I waited for it. Genesis 2 verse 7 was the hanker of my marriage. When the Lord showed me, Adam was formed before he was wedded. Get formation before you enter into marriage. I never disobeyed. <laughs> the man was formed and he received the breath of life before he received his bone. That was the principle that helped my early marriage. I never hasted. I waited for incubation. I waited to be properly discipled. I waited for formation in discipleship. I waited for God's breath to be breathed into me before I started looking for my Eve to marry. That was not the only principle I learned. My foundation was okay. How I got it wrong, I did not know. Where it all started and the glory was lost, I could not even remember. Yes, I, re I recollect that I was given a garden. The Lord told me specifically, a man without a garden is not marryable. 
If a man has no purpose, no vision, no agenda for God, that is an accident going somewhere to happen. A lady that sees a vision about such a man is a lady heading into the bush. So I waited to collect my garden before I collected my bone. Yes, I was properly discipled. I realized they told me that there was one thing I would need in my marriage. That is ability to hear God well. And I decided to learn hearing before receiving a bone. I remember just like God spoke to Adam, thou shall not eat this fruit, thou shall not eat this one. God gave me do's and don'ts. I knew God's principles. I heard God clearly. I was brought into my home garden before my bone was brought. Even at the point of delay, I still remember when I wanted to haste to pick alternative. He told me Genesis 2.18 was the promise. Genesis 2.22 was the fulfillment. There were three verses, verse 19, verse 20, and verse 21. There were three years or three months or three decades of waiting, of delay and of temptation, which I have to go through before we qualify to marry the right bone. This I did. I never hasted. I waited. Even <laughs> I waited. I waited. I waited. When it seems as if it was the Lord who brought those monkeys, those animals, those goats, those lizards, and brought them before me to check what I will call them. I never called them my bone. I never picked any of those lizard sisters and snaky singers in our choir to be my wife. I knew that somebody can be speaking in tongues in the Garden of Eden and yet a monkey. I knew somebody can be a Bible study coordinator and a sister called even in my Garden and Fellowship and yet can be a snake. I never rushed. I waited till these three verses would go. And one day, the Lord showed me the bone which was removed from the man. He made into becoming a woman and brought to the man. So I knew I am not to search. For the lady will be brought. So I sat down to wait until she was eventually brought. As she was brought, I had a glorious wedding. I never did my wedding like Samson. Who threw a necessary party like the Philistines. Dancing and marrying among the unbelievers. It was a solemn, solemn, uh, solemnization. It was a godly wedding. I, I never wasted resources because I was planning for a home array. But where did I get it wrong? If my foundation was wrong, I would have said, maybe because I didn't wait enough. Maybe because I didn't listen to disciples. Maybe because I didn't wait on God. But I did all this. Yet, there was an itch. Until God helped my heart. That the fact that a man married the will of God does not mean there will not be days of trials. <clears throat> Dearly beloved Christian, wherever you are reading my letter, it is a letter of my lost glory and how I was recovered. I believe that if you have been lost, you can still be recovered. If Rehab was lost in Jericho and was recovered by two spies, you can be recovered despite your immorality. If the thief on the cross can be recovered 15 minutes to death, 15 minutes to eternal doom, yet I believe you can also be recovered despite all the errors of David. He was recovered as God sent Nathan to him. So I believe recovery is possible. No matter how dry your bones in the wilderness and in the valleys of dry bone, I know you can still come back to life. If you will hear the voice of prophecy of the Lord coming to you, as it came to me. <laughs> Which disturbing me again. That's why I put it in vibration. Ah! Lola. Lola, the lollipop. The river that swallowed the mighty. Ah. Who could ever imagine? That Lola will be the one to lick me up. No, 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 I will not pick it. You will not damage my life again. She was the river inside which I sunk. When the axe head was to fall, normally it should fall on the ground. Because they were not cutting trees on the river. They were not cutting trees on top of the sea. And the axe head got into the river. When where it was being worked upon was on the surface ground. The mystery of backsliding. Lola. Lola. She was the river that took me away. She took me away from my wife. She took me away from fellowship. She took me away from discipleship. She took me away from my destination. 
I will never remember. I will, I will never ever remember that name again. So it kept troubling me. I never thought I would sink deep as I did. I started on the surface of that river. Everything was clear and clear. I thought it was a beautiful river. A water to drink and to make merry. I never knew there was dirt underneath. I never knew that if a man sink at the first layer, he may enjoy swimming. But deeper and deeper into Hero, he will meet sharks and snakes in the river. He will meet all manner of creatures that he never bargained for. When I enter into Lola, the river that swallowed me up, when I get to the basement, I saw death. My axe head was, was over swallowed, overcome by many, many particles. I could not even remember praying, for my prayer life was gone. With that backsliding, my Bible study was gone. All my quiet time, my treasure with which I knew and grew in the Lord, everything was lost. Everything was lost. <laughs> everything was lost. <laughs> everything was lost. I started watching pornography. I started checking it out on the internet. Perhaps I will see a better alternative than my wife. I started flocking with other unbelievers. Ah, I was like Jonah. Yes, yes, when he fled from the presence of the Lord, he entered into that ship to go with them. Ah, usually when a man is backsliding, there are them that will help him sink more. Even if you don't want to go far, they are a friendly friend. friend friendly friend, but they are fiends. They are adversaries. They are enemies in disguise. To go with them, that was what Jonah said. Until he began to move to Tashis through the ship. Relationship was my own problem. To some people that I met under, the, uh, 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 under that water, it was coaching. Yes, I met great men of God who backslided together with me under the seal. It was housemanship that brought them there. To some people, it was a wrong fellowship. That was their ship that headed them to Tashis. To some people, it was partnership. Yes, I saw some students there. It was scholarship. They enter into scholarship that was not given to go, that was not given to them by God. They celebrate the scholarship, but they never knew it was a ship going to Tashis. I entered the ship too, and I began to sunk. I began to sunk. No, I will not pick you. I, I will not pick you. Who is calling again? Ah, my disciple. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Please let me not pick this call, sir. Please let me not pick the call. Ah, it is good to have a correct father. That that axe head was restored, it was because somebody cried. This man has been crying for my recovery. Because in my state of backsliding, I lost my prayer. So I could not recover myself through any prayer anymore. But he waited for me. He was patient with me. Ah! No wonder Jesus was rescued. Many babies were destroyed by Herod. Many babies were destroyed by that king. But Jesus was not destroyed. Why? He had a correct father in Joseph who could hear God and rescue him in his own place of prayer. May you have that father. When you cannot hear God, he can hear God for you. Even when your sight is blindfolded and you cannot see danger coming, he could see Herod coming. And he could escape you back to Egypt till your Herod is dead. God, thank you for giving me this kind of disciple. Thank you for giving me a gyros. We will not sleep. We will not eat until he find Jesus for the resurrection of a dying daughter. That's a correct father. Thank you, Lord. When I was dying, you raised this man to pray for me. That was how my battle act began to be restored. I will forever praise God for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, <laughs> ah, you see, you see, I went loaded. I came back empty. I went fully loaded, loaded with treasures. I was a gift to my generation. A little word could revive a whole city. When I spoke, Barrenness dissolved. 
When I spoke, the lame will rise. When I spoke, backsliders are restored. Bro, there is nothing more. There is nothing more. When I lost my marriage, I lost all. When I trivialized and dishonored my matrimonial bed, I lost all. Oh. <coughs> my wife, I forgave you. And I will still forgive you. Yes, I will. I know it's my fault. I knew. I know you, you, are, you are part of the reason for my backsliding. But why will I, can't, why will I continue to count on, on the nakedness of Bathsheba when it was David that watched the pornography film alive? If David has insisted that Bathsheba was the reason of his fault, he wouldn't have repented genuinely. Yes, I know it's my fault. I know, I know in those days when you used to complain, when you murmur and grumble at me, when you say I was, I was not doing well enough, I knew you were pushing me out. I knew you were sending me to an eternal hell. Your nagging, your murmuring, your complaint, your carnality, your materialism pushed me out eventually. You were not contented and satisfied with the little we have. You enjoyed traveling with bishops and directors of company rather than traveling with me. Food you will not cook for me. Even the, 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 the desire of man on bed you will not give to me. Oh, I was highly starved. And I began to seek for alternative outside there. You were busy, but I know you are guilty. For you were actually made a help for me. But you started helping another man. It was a help for him, not a help for them. But for him, for me, but you did not, you did not help me. Your children are wayward. You never catered for them. You were so busy. You were collecting huge salary. You were, you were transferred from one state to another state. You enjoy leaving me in isolation, dying in loneliness. I forgive you. Even your salary would not help me. Because you would not declare you were not transparent enough. You bought cars outside of me. You, 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 you gave pledges in the church without consulting me. You built secret houses with your friend. You never told me, my dear wife, my hem, the stick on which my, my battle hat was tied. You were the one that got losing until I started being losing also. Eventually, you lost me. How are you now? With me, you were called a battle axe. But without me, you are nothing but a firewood. With all your beauty, with all your brilliance, with all your professor, professor, uh, professorship, with all your uh, uh, directors and bishops that you flock together. Without me, you are still firewood going to hell. But I forgive you. I forgive you because it was my fault. I remember Jesus told me that he washed his wife with the water of God's word so that he can present to himself a spotless church without wrinkle. I wanted a spotless wife, but I never washed you. I wanted a wrinkled wife, but I never took time to wash you. I was washing disciples. I never washed my home. Another man's garden, I was tending, but I never tended my home. So it was my fault. Because the woman shall be called woman, for she shall be taken from man. Whatever I see in you actually was taken from me. The madness in you actually came from me because you are my bone. You are a reflection of my identity. So you are not at fault. I am at fault. Ah, what shall I do now? I think I need to go home. I need to arise like that prodigal son. I'm going back home. It's enough under this river. Enough with friends that will not accompany me in the fulfillment of God's purpose for my life. I'm going back home. I'm redeciding. I'm redeciding. Since I have not died, there is hope of recovery. If I have been cut off in death, then the assurance of recovery would have been gone. Thank God I never died in that river. Ah. How will I be refilled? It's all right. I will go back to him. <laughs> I will go back to him. He will refill me. He will refill me. Because when I got lost, actually I got lost from the hand of my handler before I got lost from the hook of my hem, the help me. When Jonah was to backslide, he was actually running away from God's presence. When Adam was to fall, he first fell out of God's presence, not hearing God, but hearing his wife. 
Every man's fall is first traceable to lack of relationship with God. Before you are lost, you have actually lost God. The first person that Adam saw before he saw Eve was God. He saw God making him, talking to him before he saw Eve. But when he started focusing on Eve backing God, he lost God, he lost that Eve. I'm going back home to my maker. He will not only restore my water of life, he will restore my marriage. I must go. Why? Sons of prophets are waiting for me. For they could no longer continue until my battle axe is restored back to their hands. Generations are waiting for me. No assignment, no vision will prosper until my marriage prosper. I may be a good instrument in my company today, but that company will perish if my marriage refuses to be restored. I may be a good instrument in that company today, but I'm a disaster in that company. So they should release me. They should allow me. They should give me leave or even give me sack letter. If that will restore my marriage, I'm ready to do anything and to cut off away from everything to restore this home. For if my home is restored, my fellowship is restored. Generations are restored. Nations will be restored. Politics is dirty because marriage is dirty. Education is dirty because marriage is dirty. When a home is corrupt, corruption will enter into business. When a home is corrupt, the land gets corrupt. Restore my home. Give me a Christian home. Bow down your heads. Pray with me. Give me a Christian home. Wherever I'm missing it, wherever I'm missing it, restore me, O oh Lord. Restore me, O oh Lord. Sanctify me by the word of life. Purge me of myself, my Lord and King. Make my heart, O oh Lord, for.